at the end of the day, uh, the war will come to an end one way or another. The chances are Putin will still be in place and, and that will be, you know, at the end of the war will be um, done through negotiations and some sort of ceasefire. Now, only diplomacy can end the war in Ukraine. That was the message from President Vladimir Zelensky in a national TV address last night. There's been heavy fighting as Russian forces step up their efforts to seize the whole of the Lugansk region. Let's speak to the Times correspondent Richard Spencer, who's in Dnipro this morning. Hi, Richard. Good morning. Hello. Tell us more about what President Zelensky has been saying. I mean, it's interesting that particular line from his speech has been picked up, the idea that, you know, there'll be no uh, peace without negotiations. I think uh, that's a line he's been, uh, I mean, that's a line he's always had, to be fair. And mm. he was elected originally on a um, uh, on a ticket of coming to terms with the Russians three years ago. Um, uh, obviously, it didn't quite work out. And um, I think what he's saying, I think he's sending a message there to countries like, uh, France and Germany, who um, have been supporting Ukraine, but not wholeheartedly, and uh, you know, with a lot of murmurings in that country that he's been too antagonistic to Moscow, and that uh, at the end of the day, you know, Russia and Europe have to get on together, European Union have to get on together. Um, they don't think that Putin will fall, and therefore, you know, he has to be given some sort of uh, honourable way out of this. Uh, slightly chaotic uh, invasion that he's conducted into Ukraine. Um, but he's also said in the same speech, uh, you know, there will be no compromises, there will be no um, giving away of Ukrainian territory in, or in, 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 uh, in order to make peace. So I don't think um, the, the fundamentals of his position have changed. Mm. Is it an impossible request, Richard? Uh, sorry, whose who's request? Uh, to uh, say that um, uh, say that talks need to end the war, that there's a place for diplomacy here. Uh, we're obviously talking about involving Russia, led by a president who is who is beyond compromise sometimes. So I, I understand why he's calling for this, but is it but is it an impossible request? Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, uh, the war will come to an end one way. Or another the chances are putin will still be in place and and that will be you know, at the end of the war will be um done through negotiations and some sort of ceasefire the question is really i think for um ukraine and zelensky is uh, i'm sure the russians would you know quite like at some point to work towards a ceasefire with um you know mu as much of ukrainian territory under their control as they can hold on mm -hmm. to having seized quite large amounts of it you know um, they haven't taken kiev and kharkiv the two biggest cities we as we know but they still have a large swathe of territory in the south um so i think uh, a lot depends on whether uh you know the ukrainians can um push uh, the, the russians back in those areas uh and whether therefore they can you know have a peace uh, uh, or at least a ceasefire on their terms um uh, the indications are from from Zelensky is that you know he does need to um, achieve that um, unless he unless you know there are sudden reverses now and the Russians started taking more territory again. Are all Russian troops really now centred uh, around that eastern Donbass area? Is that where the concentration of them is? Uh, no, um, I mean there's a slight misunderstanding here. I think um, I, I read a piece in the Times about this yesterday. Um, that's where the the offensive is, and that's where the um, that's where they are currently trying trying to make ground. But they still have troops all along this southern zone across the s south of Ukraine along the Black Sea coast. Uh, they've taken these major cities like Mariupol, Melitopol. Uh, and Kherson, the biggest city they've taken, um, just to the northwest of the Crimea. Um, and they have troops defending a front line all the way along there as well, where there is also fighting not to the same extent as in the Far East. Uh, so the question is, you know, they, they, they are embedded there, they're dug in in trenches, and they're uh, exerting control over these big uh, Ukrainian cities. So, um, you know, that's, that poses very big questions for, for everyone involved in this conflict. Yeah, I'm, I'm just having a look at your piece now with some marvellous photography in there um, also where you uh, look at the battle to reach the Black Sea. There's been plenty of discussions about the stranglehold really uh, on that Black Sea area and uh, the issue of trying to get um, trying to get grain out of the country and the supply line. 
Is there any movement uh, on that at all as uh, Ukraine tries to tries to keep those chains of supply open? Yeah, no, there's, there's, this is a very uh, interesting topic because, um, of course, um, Ukraine is is such a large grain exporter and that's going to provide, you know, this war is going to make such a, a big dent in food supplies to, to the rest of the world. And a lot of people are very worried about that. And, and a lot of the price rises we're seeing um, in food is, is um, connected to that. Now, of course, they could get food out through uh, the European Union. They have borders with um, Poland and Romania, but that would require, um, you know, a big <laughs> drop in EU paperwork required. And I do think there are, uh, there may be discussions about that, about how mm. to um, enable uh, Ukrainian access to um, other ports um, uh, and other, you know, routes out of the country. But um, you, you know, with with a blockade of of Ukrainian ports and you know lots of <laughs> lots of warships um, uh, wandering around the Black Sea firing mm. missiles, um, it's not a um, it's not a good uh, it's not a good prospect for for this year's grain supplies. Mm. 